Ever wish your Notion database could do more than just store information? Sure, text fields and numbers are great for collecting data, but what if your database could actually think for itself? That's where Notion formulas come in. They're like giving your database a brain, automatically crunching numbers, combining text, and making smart decisions based on your data. Today, I'm gonna to show you everything you need to know to unlock these tools and get started with formulas in your Notion database. Hi, I'm Tom from X-Ray Tech, the workflow company. At X-Ray, we've helped hundreds of companies to build time-saving automations using no-code and low-code tools like Notion, Zapier, and Airtable. If you'd like to learn more about X-Ray, check out our website at xray.tech. To see more no-code and low-code tips every week, like this video, subscribe to our channel, and turn on notifications so you don't miss a new way to save time. In this video, I'm going to show you how to add a formula field to your Notion database. Then I'll walk you through a few key examples of functions you can use to work with text, numbers, and dates. We'll wrap things up with a look at a function that will let you add extensive conditional logic to any formula. Let's get started. To add a formula property to a database in Notion, open up the database and add a new property. Choose formula as the type, give the property a name, then click edit formula to begin writing your own custom formula. Your formula can be just about anything you want it to be, as long as it contains at least one valid expression. An expression will typically consist of one or more functions, but it could be as simple as a string of text that just says, hello world. Click save to see the result of your formula. In this case, you'll just see hello world in this property for every page in the database. Neat, but not super useful. Let's edit this formula to use a simple function instead. We will replace our text string here with this function, ID. Note that Notion provides suggestions as you type, making it easy to find the function you're looking for. Then give the formula a new name and save it. And now we see the unique page ID for every page in the database. But this is just the tip of the iceberg. Now let's take a look at some more advanced functions that will let your formulas automatically edit text, run calculations, format dates, process conditional logic, and more. If you'd like to follow along, you can copy our template database to get started. That's in the resources board linked in the description. There, you'll also find lots of documentation about Notion functions, so you can explore some more on your own. Let's start with some functions that revolve around editing text strings. For instance, in many cases, you might want to extract a subset of text from a longer string. Let's create a formula that just grabs the first three characters of our product name property so we can start making a new product ID. I'll go through this one with lots of detail to really explain how functions work in Notion. For the rest, we'll move pretty quickly. To start, add a new formula property and edit the formula. Type substring, and you should see a matching function appear. Press enter or return to add the function to your formula. Unlike the ID function, this one requires a couple of arguments. Arguments are just pieces of data that you plug into functions so they can run their calculations properly. In this window here, Notion will explain the required and optional arguments for any function you pick. For substring, we need to identify the text that we want to extract a snippet from. You can enter static text directly in quotes like we did before, or you can pass a property here instead to use its contents. I'll select the product name property, so this function will look at the product name for each page. Every argument needs to be separated with a comma, so I'll type one after the product name property. Next, we need to specify a starting point to slice our substring from. This is a single number that represents the character position, starting with zero for the first character. Yes, character position in Notion is like coding and European elevators. Zero is one and one is two. Don't worry, you'll get used to it. So we'll enter zero since we want to start at the beginning. Add another comma for this argument. Then we can optionally provide an ending point for this substring. That will be the number three, which represents the fourth character in the string. So now this will make a substring out of the first three characters at position zero, one, and two, and will not include the character that is in position three. Save the formula and check the results. Looks good. Every page now has a product ID field that just borrows the first three characters of the product name. Excellent. But let's build this ID out a bit more. In many cases, you'll often want to make sure that every piece of text conforms to a single capitalization standard. Let's get some practice with that by making all of the text in our product ID uppercase. Edit the product ID function, and at the beginning, type upper. Upper just requires one argument, the text we want to capitalize. 
In this case, that's the output of our original substring function. So we'll just enclose that whole function in uppers parentheses. Save your changes, then check out the result. Now that the product IDs are all capitalized, let's just make these IDs a bit more unique by including some text from the page ID field as well. Within the upper function, we'll add a plus sign after the substring function to concatenate another piece of text. Then we'll add another substring function. This will take the last five characters of the page ID, positions 27 to 32. Save the formula and check the output. Perfect. We've now got the end of the page ID added to every product ID with all the letters properly capitalized. If you want to add spaces or other characters between concatenated strings, just enter them as another string in the expression, like this. Next, let's take a quick look at how you can use Notion functions to run mathematical calculations in your formulas. Let's start with some simple addition. We'll make a total price field that adds up the values of the price and shipping properties. The function for addition is just called add. Then each number you want to add up is entered in its own argument, separated by commas. We're just going to add up two numbers here, but you could add three, four, 10, or 100 numbers if you really wanted to. Save the formula, and you'll see the contents of both fields added up to make one number. Excellent. Note that you can also skip using the function and just use the plus signs instead. You'll get the exact same result, assuming you're adding numbers together. However, if your arguments are text strings, then your output will also be a text string and not a number. That's how 3 plus 4 will equal 34 instead of 7. Multiplication works in largely the same fashion. We'll edit the total price formula to include sales tax as well. The multiply function will work well for that. We just need to enter two numbers we want to multiply separated by commas. That will be the product price multiplied by the sales tax rate. And the product of both of those numbers will be added to the total as well. After saving the formula, we've got a new total. Great. Of course, sales tax isn't the same in every state in the US, but accounting for variability like that is easy with Notion functions. We just need to use some conditional logic in an ifs statement. This will let us set the value of a property dynamically based on any condition we want. We'll edit the sales tax field and convert it to a formula field. The function will be ifs with an s at the end. That will let us specify several conditions and corresponding values. This function's setup can look a little confusing, and honestly, I don't think the Notion examples here really clarify much. The pattern of arguments will go like this. First, we need to provide a condition to evaluate. With this double equal sign, we'll check if the state is equal to CT. Then, we need to provide a value to output if that condition is true. That will be Connecticut sales tax of 6.35%. We can provide as many condition value pairs as we want. To make it easier to visually parse this function, I'm going to hit shift return to add new lines. Notion formulas ignore spaces and new lines unless they're enclosed in quotes to make a string. So this is purely aesthetic formatting to make things easier to understand. I'll add a few more conditions for each state in New England, except New Hampshire. Don't worry, we'll get to the live free or die state in a moment. Once you've added all your specific conditions, you can wrap the function up with a single default value. If none of the other conditions are met, then the function will output this value. As such, it doesn't need a condition. For the default, we'll use zero sales tax. There you go, New Hampshire, and Oregon and Montana too. With this function all set, save the formula field. Now, we can change the state for each page and instantly see the sales tax and total price fields update in turn. Awesome. Let's conclude this tutorial with a brief overview of a couple date time formulas. We'll start with a very easy one, now. With now, you can retrieve the current time up to the minute. This is another function that doesn't require an argument. When you enter the now function into a formula, that formula will recalculate the current time whenever the database is reloaded. If you want to reference the time the page was created as a fixed value instead, use the created time property. That property exists for every page in Notion, even if you haven't manually added a field for it yet. Next, let's create a function that reformats the date generated by now. 
To reformat dates and times, you can use the format date function. The first argument is the date time you want to reformat. In this case, now. The second argument is the formatting token enclosed in quotes. There are a ton of options for how you can format dates and times, and I've added a list of all possible settings to this video's resources board. For this example, we'll use this format to show two digits for the month and day and four digits for the year. Then it will show 12 hour time with AM or PM as appropriate. Save the formula and check the results. There's the newly formatted date and time, perfect. Notion formulas unlock a totally new level of functionality in Notion. If you need to reformat text, do some math, add conditional logic, or work with dates and times in your databases, then custom formulas are an indispensable tool. Be sure to check out the resources board for additional examples and documentation that you can dive into on your own. If you enjoyed this video, prove you're human, like and subscribe for more automation tips every week. If you'd like to learn more about low-code automation and workflow design, follow us on LinkedIn, Twitter, or Facebook, and you can find all of our content on our website at xray.tech. You can find all those links in the X-Ray Workflow Resources Board down below, and as always, find your focus and stay in flow.